Benedict. Didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my customers being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee speak in sober judgment. Why, Faith, methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, in a case to put it into. But speak you this with a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack to tell us Cupid is a good hair finder and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, in what key shall a man take you to go in the song? In mine eyes she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. Well, I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. And there's her cousin, and she were not possessed with a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary. Hera would be my wife. Is it come to this? In faith, hath not the world one man but he will wear his cap with suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Oh, go to it, Faith. And thou wilt needs thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it, sigh away Sundays. Oh, look, Don Pedro is returned to seek you. Uh, what secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonardo's? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio. I can be secret as a dumb man, I would have you think so, but on my allegiance, I mark you this, on my allegiance, he is in love. With who? Now that is your grace's part. Hmm? Well, mark how short his answer is. With Hero, <laughs> Leonardo's short daughter. If this were so, so were it uttered. Like the old tale, my lord, it is not so, nor twas not so, but indeed, God forbid, it should be so. If my passion change not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. Well, amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. By two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. But I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Oh, thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will have a recheat winded in my forehead, or hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any, I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is, which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die look pale with love. <laughs> with anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Prove that ever I lose more blood with love than I will get again with drinking. Pick out mine eyes with a ballad maker's pen and hang me up in the door of a brothel house for the sign of blind Cupid. <laughs> well, if ever thou dost fall from this faith, thou wilt prove a notable argument. Well, if I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And he that hits me, let him be clapped on the shoulder and called Adam. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. And the savage bull may. But if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead. And let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. If this should ever happen, thou wouldst be horn mad. Nay, hey, if Cupid have not spent all his quiver in Venice, thou wilt quake for this shortly. I look for an earthquake too, then. <laughs> well, you will temporize with the hours. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, repair to Leonardo's, commend me to him, and tell him I will not fail him at supper. Oh, indeed, he hath made great preparation. I have almost matter enough in me for such an embassage, and so I commit you to the tuition of God from my house if I had it. The 6th of July, your loving friend, Benedict. <laughs> Nay, mock not, mock not. The body of your discourse is sometimes guarded with fragments, and the guards are but slightly basted on, neither. Ere you flout old ends any further, examine your conscience. <laughs> so I leave you. <laughs>